Okay, so uh, this is another lightning talk for like making slide with JS. But I have to confess that basically I copy everything from Luis that his talk for Haskell Exchange uh, 2015 this year. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't know about JS uh, CJS, basically just that's uh, everything for Haskell, but you could code gen, code gen the JavaScript. So compile Haskell to code to JavaScript. And it's runtime because you know uh, the GSC comes with the C implement runtime that's on your machine. So when, uh, when after linkage, linking phase and the binary uh, generate have used that runtime a lot. But in the browser or Node.js, it has to be implementing JavaScript. And that's the, I think, one of the most difficult part for the whole engineering task. Yeah. So with th this GHC.js, with unlike other like implementation that, uh, uh, that it could reuse a lot of code between front end and back end. That as long as that the compiler doesn't use that, the, those C pre-processing like CPP language extension, I think it's possible. And a lot of uh, package on hackage that you could just cabal install with dash dash GHC.js to to uh, install the GHC.js version. So to have some idea that. Uh, Could you please zoom the font? Yeah, sure. Uh, So uh, with hello, it's inside it's just hello world. Then, uh, then comp compile it. Then it will generate uh, a JSEXE folder with a lot of stuff in inside that it has lib and, and other stuff. <laughs> yeah, and after that, you could just node run uh, hello. J JS, EXE, and all, and you will print hello world for that. Yeah. So, and you could check out the uh, file size. That's because it comes with the runtime, so it's like 970K. So it's pretty large, just purely for hello world. And yeah. yeah. That's with the whole runtime. Like yeah, yeah, that's a runtime. Just be aware of it. If you're going to like generate some code for browser, then that may some cause some impact for your like loading, preloading performance. Yeah. Uh, you could specify O2, but at this moment, I'm not sure that I haven't benchmarked a lot, so, so I didn't make. I'm not pretty sure that that it could be like optimized a lot for those common library could be. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if you meant GHC optimization or GHC JavaScript, JavaScript optimization. Yes, JavaScript optimization actually just did what it was doing in the size Yeah, so that, that probably would be more important, minification. Uh, yeah, but as far as I know that. It can. It, it can be, but at this moment is it implement? You, you just need a separate application that reads. Just yeah, then uh, running other minifier app yeah, for the post process. Yeah, minifiers like Google Closure require the code yeah, to be yeah. written in a very the JavaScript to be done in a specific style. To the right on, right on. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then uh, the Luit in his talk that he demonstrated how to like load the compile JavaScript into browser. So like uh, this example that basically that is the following text is uh, loaded from this program contents. And uh, there's more dynamic output for the following slide that, that it listens on one of the inputs that to uh, calculate the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah. Could you show the previous slide where you have this uh, ex uh, explanation how that's to work? Uh, uh, it used the the library that he has coded that in 
in its uh, repo that uh, that it has a common HS for that. That so he has uh, written some function for that to be used in, in the slides. So this common HS would be loaded when the slide HTML was loaded. That uh, his structure is using that pen doc to transform the markdown slides and like adding a filter into it and like rewrite all of the uh, things into like uh, smaller pieces and load load it like um, in the repo uh, the slide is is in markdown so uh, this is the uh, input for standard review and each slide that is common uh, is markdown syntax and for this uh, quoting that mark with Ron Haskell there's a filter for that that I in the app folder that it would uh, basically that identify those Ron Haskell that uh, because it's a face of Panda. Panda is that loading, parsing all of the markdown and face by face. Then one add, and you can write a filter to insert the plugin for it. And its standard output basically is the thing you generated. So what you have to do is to identify those wrong hash code block in your markdown, and somehow like you like calling out that in, uh, collect the block. Sorry. Uh, so you first have to collect code blocks with those thin taggers from Haskell, then somehow uh, write it to a file in the in the uh, source directory. This M1 that to M10 is basically that generated by that filter. So that filter will collect all of the run Haskell block and write it out to a unique name as prefix with M. So starting from M1, then uh, M1, HS. So this is uh, the run Haskell, the first block, that it has some template in the template directory, then interpolate those string. Uh, this is the main, then the module is basically the same template as you see in the M M1 to M10. That is if you have coded in like Snap or some, some web framework, they use this uh, dollar for inserting to interpolation for that. So you collect the block, then write it out to M1, and basically just call out to another process, which is GHCCS. Uh, but I, ins I somehow modify it to run it into Kabao uh, Sandbox, so it's more cleaner for that. Then com combine the, uh, the main HS. The main HS basically is just uh, collect all of the M module, uh, and run start it by sequence. The M1 start, M2 start, like that. Start is like uh, some entry point for the temp, uh, for its template. Yeah. So after compile the code, uh, you can see that the right main module, then compile code. When it does, it exit with successful state, then put it out to the center output, then Panda would identify as the output you should uh, out, output to the HTML. Yeah. So the final result is just GHCJS slides. And you can see uh, HTML. And if, if you search for the script, that you can see that here it loads from the source directory that for the main. JS, EXE, and all. So yeah, insert that line to load the JS uh, like in one, one batch to into the browser. So everything you called 
in the slide uh, is could be called to the module. So uh, this dynamic text and static text it basis uh, the function it has been coded in that common dot hs. So to be easier to insert some div, uh, actually it's canvas to insert some like uh, output for that. That this uh, diagram is also generated with the diagram library. That for the dynamic output is from two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to learn about for the diagram, which I I still haven't figured out fully. Yeah. And for this, that for. Yeah, you can change the number to generate uh, different output. Yeah. And even detect them mouse that because everything you could do for JS that basically you could do in uh, Haskell code and compile the JS then load it. Yeah. Then tracking down the mouse of position. Yeah. And here to generate a grid of graph that a grid list and center at something then output in a canvas element that's tracking down the mouse to generate different elements. This is all the example that's copied from the Louis uh, repo. Just that uh, I sort of refact uh, refactoring it because just uh, GSC JS is under like heavy development that the code changed pretty quickly. Some of the code inside his repo has been a little bit outdated. Like JS ref has been renamed as JS value or something. So I, and also, uh, in his repo, he used Cabal for that, and I like use Stack for it uh, since I thought that would be Stack would be in general easier and is like the future for next Haskell platform. And uh, Stack also has the plan to support GSCJs. If you uh, it detects uh, on your laptop that the GSCJs is missing, then you will like download the. Uh, uh, Tarbo and install for on your computer. Just that, uh, but I think the stack current version is 1.16. And, but I try it, it the, on the wiki that is said it's okay for some resolver naming, but I tried it, it's, uh, it's broken. So maybe after 1.17 it might work. Yeah, that's all. Question? Uh, they ha they have library for that. They they have uh, GSCJS DOM for the module, but uh, still the same. It might compile and it works, but the performance might still not there. That yeah yeah, and the other. Nowadays, I think 
Apple or a pretty announced Mozilla I mean Firefox OS for sure also. Yeah. And and Chrome do support at least experimentally WebGL on mobile platforms and try to use the native GPU support. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm working for Mozilla by the way. <laughs> and the last bit last bit project I heard is they plan to call the render engine to the GL. like some initial WebGL demos like the, the pool, swimming pool where you make waves and yeah. it's all simulated in WebGL. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be running at, on the iPhones, on the iPads. Yeah. So, yeah. so if the, 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 the performance in theory is there, like possibly even Raspberry if the GPU would be supported to do it. I think uh, for the such such multiple APIs that in the list uh, the upon bottleneck may maybe not just only the GPU part. Yeah. Like we have encountered some very low end uh, issue like the big ADN and the little ADN are the types type array. Type array uh, well depends on the bit hardware. So that may be another issue the GGS state may encounter. That's yeah, so GS G G G S uses uh, I think LLVM. Or, or does it generate itself? I think it's co-generated by itself. Okay. Uh, but I think it uses basically the RA model for, for annotation. Yeah, yeah, anyway, I just think it's interesting. I guess. But we will try to get <laughs> optimized for its rest. Yeah, it's a, it's a long process. Yeah, try to write it. So, uh, and that the other one more thing is that the source map that for debugging that might still not be there. That's I checked the 2013 status that, but this uh, issue has been closed for 2020, uh, 2012. So, uh, for the one more like trouble you might encounter is that for debugging that might still not that mature for that mapping to the location in your source code that cogen that part of the JS result into an arrow. Yeah. Um, I talked to Ryan Trinkle about this, mm -hmm. who uh, develops reflex DOM, which is one of the libraries they use JS DOM. Um, and he, he, you can use reflex DOM and just compile with GHC to machine code mm -hmm. and then run it with web. Yeah, you use the, the inscription? No, you, you, you just compile machine code on your, on your machine. Yeah. You get a process that opens the, the an HTML vendor and then the DOM. And yeah. then you run your Haskell code. Compile oh. with a normal GHC but on that DOM that is in your process mm -hmm. for development. Oh. So then you have all the debugging tools that you have for normal processes in GHC. And then when you're done, when you're done debugging, He also does profiling in, in GHC. I think it's for development. Yeah. Like, oh, if you are close to the server, I, I, I've seen WebGK applications running. Okay. They are not that optimized for latency. So I, I'm not sure if you have a full web leaking. This kind of emulation of process environment as a browser. No, yeah, you, you, you have a, you have a rendering. Thing. HTML, and then you have a DOM representation, uh, but then the HTML, uh, the, the Haskell code that gets compiled yeah, to, yeah. to machine code interacts with the DOM in the same way that the JavaScript code would interact right, with right. the browser DOM. Mm -hmm. And mock JavaScript. Yeah, but it behaves, I mean, the goals, the modular bugs, it behaves exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, for, for profiling, for example, the assumption is that you open a browser and you see something slow, and then you compile it with GHC to machine code, mm -hmm. and then you assume that if you profile it, that it will also translate to performance yeah. improvements in the browser. Yeah. 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 And of course, there are 
also use cases where you might have customers that that, that are able to just run your, your web kit compiled desktop program that yeah, so runs yeah, faster. That's the use case I have to do what I'm doing. And if it's not so, if it's basically complex widgets, so far I've seen the, the application is very small. Yeah, but, but I think like, like you were talking about source map, yeah. especially for development, that's also like a very good mm. uh, solution. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Then that's yeah. So, uh, uh, how many libraries does like uh, the core custom libraries can be compiled in web using with this JS? I think basically everything in pure Haskell could be reused. That yeah, a lot of, of Haskell libraries basically only rely on some. GHC language extensions, so they all compile. Okay. As long as you don't rely on some binary right. yep. binding, and yep. actually minority of Haskell libraries, unless yep. it's anything that can be compiled from basically from source code, right? Yeah. yeah. For the package that I've had binding for like for the GTK, then those things might not yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, those have C code. Yeah. yeah. For pure Haskell, yeah, it's. It, I think it's work. So you could imagine running edge links in GHC GHC, so yeah. some application of this, okay. or some pure Haskell application, Google. And yeah, Google. Google. <laughs> Imagine a full stack application that basically uses JavaScript sockets on the browser side. It uses normal, you know, Y application with sockets on the Haskell side, on the server side, and you only touch the, the JavaScript and, and the HTML directly when, where you either want to use some special feature like WebGL or when you interact with your web page. Yeah, and for JSON node type, then you could also use for the client side calling for the server API, right? Basically, because you can generate a binding and using JS to compile to the client side code. Yeah. And then the main code of that application can be put somewhere on the uh, on the cloud. Yeah. Uh, it's basically on the on the content delivery network. Just put it there once and manage it. So if you, if you have a heavy application, it's not uncommon nowadays to really download megabytes or two megabytes of JavaScript and yeah, servers can, can access lightweight. Can be, can be, yeah, but even if you have like a nice gaming framework in JavaScript, so what is it like minimum like 300 megabytes? Of course can use something. <laughs> Yeah. Or normal web, 
so that is today's four talks that so I hope you enjoy it and as usual that we encourage that people after talk to that talk to each other to, if you are have more questions on Haskell then you can like talk with me or Michal even some good Simon yeah yeah so yeah Michal have more I would have liked to have one last question because I fear that somebody tries to organize functional programming in games conference.